Well, it's springtime, the blossoms are out, and that means painting flowering shrubs. But how do you capture the immense complexity of a whole forsythia bush like this without getting caught up in the individual blossoms? Well, the key is get the character of the overall plant first and then subdivide it down to the individual blossom shapes. And you can convey the feeling of the whole plant. I'll be painting with watercolor and gouache in a watercolor sketchbook. And yes, you can mix watercolor and gouache. And starting right out with the tip of a round brush to paint the overall shape of this forsythia plant. Just a few little dots almost that I can connect in my mind will help place the plant on the page. And the colors are white, scarlet pyrrole, cerulean blue, cad yellow light and burnt sienna. I'll need that strong yellow in order to paint the mass of flowers. This is sort of a suggestion of the average color in the light. That darker sort of yellow ochre color on the right is the color of the yellow in the shadow. So this is looking at the overall plant the overall shrub as a single mass. Painting a forsythia bush covered with small flowers is different from painting a figure. The complexity and detail is almost overwhelming. It's easy to fall into the tendency to paint small flowers or leaves in a relatively quick or generalized way. But there are certain gestures or shapes that are real characteristic of a forsythia, especially the arching stems, which are held down by the weight of the blossoms and bent over. All of the stems rise up out of a cluster in the middle. So I want to get that shape or silhouette. First by planing the yellow overall color, and then cutting in there with that dark, and now coming back again with some little dots of paint. The thing I want to get to read first is the overall silhouette shape of the plant as a mass. And then I'm going to go in and suggest the star-shaped flowers just by showing them as thin shapes. The goal is to blend painterly handling with conscientious rendering. I'm trying to be aware of the character and the color of each petal and record how the colors change as the leaves move in and out of shadow. I'm still using this round brush to draw these fine stems and they're intermittent curving lines because in places they're overlapped by some of the petals in the foreground. I find that the skills that I've learned from painting the figure don't really help me that much other than learning to measure proportion and shape when I'm painting foliage or flowers like this. Instead, I have to learn to paint textures and suggest detail. The big difference is with forms like this, you don't really have the normal rules of form and shadow and light and shade and reflected light because the light is transmitted through the mass of flowers. Complete imitation of every leaf in a lush landscape is probably not possible or even desirable, nor perhaps is the other extreme of ultra softness or generalization. One can be faithful to the character of the plant without copying or imitating every detail. Instead, nature must be recreated or represented as paint on the canvas. In the links below the description, I've got links for all the materials, brushes, paints, sketchbook, and I've also got a playlist of other gouache paintings and a video of painting flowers. You can subscribe to my channel to get the latest, and I've also got a website with books and other goodies.